airport in Tokyo. At one stage, they said we all thought India would not be able to deal with the situation in Punjab. Today, Punjab, since 1996, there is total peace in Punjab. One day, the situation in Mizoram was equally serious. Today, there is total peace in Mizoram. One day, the situation in Nagaland was equally serious. Today, there is almost total peace, not yet 100% peace. There is almost total peace. Only one organization is still fighting against the government of India, but it has announced a ceasefire, and the government of India has been holding negotiations with it. So people ask me, you have been... Yeah, the Indian genius is always ultimately able to find a solution, but why it has not had been able to find a solution in JNK? I said there is one reason. In the case of all others, there was an external involvement, but the external involvement was in the form of money, was in the form of training, was in the form of arms and ammunition. In Jammu and Kashmir, we are taking longer than we did in other parts of India because of the large-scale involvement of foreign mercenaries there. What we are facing is not only a terrorist situation, but an indirect invasion of our territory by foreign mercenaries, not in hundreds, but in the thousands. That has created a greater complication. So what we require is a greater understanding of the situation on the part of the rest of the world. But we are very confident that ultimately we will find a solution, we'll find a solution to the problem. One last point which I wanted to make, and that is very often we are accused, India is accused of not implementing the Security Council resolution of the late 1940s. This question of Kashmir, when the Pakistani troops invaded Kashmir in 1947, the question of Kashmir was taken by India to the UN Security Council. It was India who made the offer that once the foreign aggression has been stopped, once the foreign troops have withdrawn from there, we will take some steps to give the people of Kashmir an opportunity to pronounce themselves on the decision of their ruler to accede to India. The UN, the resolutions, if you closely follow the Security Council resolutions, it is in three parts. The first part says Pakistan should withdraw all its troops, regulars as well as regulars masquerading as tribals from that territory. Number two, once that is done, the additional troops which India sent to Kashmir in order to counter the Pakistani aggression should be withdrawn. And after these two steps have been completed, it says consideration. The resolution uses the word, it doesn't say plebiscite will be held. It says consideration will be, held, will be given to the question of holding a plebiscite there if those two objectives have been felt. The first objective, withdrawal of Pakistani troops from the areas occupied by it, have, as still today, has not taken place. On the contrary, we feel in our perception there have been repeated violations of the Security Council resolution. Six violations. Violation number one, Pakistani troops have not been withdrawn as directed by the Security Council. Number two, the northern areas of Jammu and Kashmir, the second largest territorial component of the state after Ladakh has been incorporated into Pakistan. Its very name has been changed. Previously, it used to be known as the northern areas of Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan has changed its name as northern areas of Pakistan. It has been incorporated into Pakistan. The, the High Court of Azad Kashmir, as they call, call it, it held in 1993 that the action of the government of Pakistan in incorporating this territory, 29,000 square miles of territory, into Pakistan was a violation of the UN Security Council resolutions. You can see the judgment. Violation number three, in 1963, 20% of the territory which was occupied was illegally transferred to China. China, is, China has incorporated this territory into China. Number four. The Karakoram Highway, strategic Karakoram Highway was constructed in violation of the UN Security Council resolution. Number five, this Karakoram Highway is being used for the clandestine movement of nuclear and missile materials from China to Pakistan. Number five, the next violation, now negotiations are being held between Beijing and Islamabad for similarly bringing all equipment, nuclear and missile equipment from North Korea to Pakistan via the Karakoram Highway. And the last one, the last point which I would like to mention is North Korea has been involved since last year in the construction, in the upgradation of uh, road communications in, in, in the territories that have been occupied by Pakistan, and in, in the construction of tunnels in that area, which is again a violation of the Security Council resolution. So, so for, because of all the, some of, some of these factors have not, are not receiving the attention it deserved. Last year, Mr. Kofi Annan came to Pakistan, he came to India in March last year. He was asked this question that is, why you are not implementing the UN Security Council resolution? He said these resolutions are passed 50 years ago. Circumstances have changed. Situation has changed. They are no longer relevant, but we have to find some other way. And India has always been very keen to find some way of a peaceful solution of not only Kashmir, of all of the problems which we have with Pakistan. We had interactions with the Ziaul government. Sorry. We had interactions with all the subsequent governments. But unfortunately, whatever overtures we made have remained without adequate response from the other side. And that has come in the way of our whatever differences we have with Pakistan, finding a solution to the differences through talks. Thank you.
Uh, we will now have questions. Uh, back here. Uh, in Pakistan and very proud of that. Uh, my question is for Mr. Rahman. Uh, the way you have described the Kashmir problem, it seems to give an impression that the problem started in 1989 and there was no problem before that. India is a large country and aspires to be a member of the UN Security Council. Do you think India can continue to live in this world of denial where India is hiding behind this veil of terrorism. The issue of Kashmir is real. And if there is a problem with cross-border terrorism, why not take Pakistan on its offer and have a UN observer force on that line of control, which will clearly tell everybody if there is any cross-border terrorism. But as a South Asian living in the US, my question to you, sir, is I would like to see both India and Pakistan one of the greatest countries in the world. And India, as the larger country, must come to grip with the dispute. The dispute exists. It's real. People are being killed. India is charged with state-sponsored terrorism. How do you answer that? Well, thanks for the question. See, so far as discussing, whether you call it the problem, the issue, or whatever it is, with Pakistan is concerned, as I mentioned in a hurry, it was the concluding part of my speech, India has never had any hesitation in discussing. We had discussed with various governments. We had discussed when General Ziaul Haq was in power. We had discussed with Benazir Bhutto, Rajiv Gandhi had twice met her. And when Nawaz Sharif was the Prime Minister, he had one meeting with uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar, our Prime Minister. Mr. Narasim Rao, our Prime Minister, had three meetings with uh, Mr. Nawaz Sharif. Mr. Indra Gujral had a meeting. Mr. Bajpai took the initiative in going to Lahore. They came to a series of agreements. We had the Shimla agreement, and we had the agreement on, on various confidence building measures, the agreement on a composite dialogue in law, etc. The problem which we have been subsequently, somebody made a reference to last year's Agra. Uh, about my good friend Mr. Vani said that uh, they, how is it they could not reach an agreement on the, on the formulations in the communique. One of the reasons, apparently it has not been well known, one of the reasons they could not reach an agreement on the joint communique was that the present government in Pakistan, they insisted that the communique should not have any reference to any of the previous agreements reached between the two governments. It should not have any reference to the Shimla agreement. It should not have refer any reference to Lahore declaration, etc. If every government which comes to power, we had never experienced in the past, it wants to repudiate whatever agreements were reached in the past, then it becomes difficult. The other thing is, India is always ready for a discussion. What we have been telling Pakistanis, Yes, Kashmir is one, one aspect of the problem. There are lots of other issues on which we can go ahead. Mr. Jiang Zemin, China, we have a problem. We have 